Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for that, Scott. Um, Steve, mm -hmm. how you yes. doing, man? I'm doing good for a Monday. Yep, yep, always the case. Um, all right, everyone, welcome. Today is April 5th. April is upon us. Hello, springtime. So welcome, everybody, to the Office Hours webinar. Of course, I'm Jamie. I'm your host. Got my trusty wingman in here as well, Mr. Steve Gomez. Got some interesting things to share with you guys here today. Um, before we get rolling here, just want to take a moment to make the lawyers sleep a little bit easier. Just want to make sure everybody in attendance is aware uh, that we share this information with you for in informational purposes only, or what we could call educational purposes. Um, simply meaning, if you need investment advice, uh, that's not what we're doing here today or in any of our webinars. Um, like I said, it's all for educational purposes. So if you do need someone to tell you what to buy, what to sell, when to do it, all that good stuff, do yourself a favor, find a licensed individual, someone like a registered investment advisor or a Series 7 licensed stockbroker. Uh, that way it's all nice and legal because they're legally you know, allowed to dispense that type of information to you. We're just a bunch of traders trying to find some cool things in the market to share with you guys. All right, I think that'll do the job there. And always like to take just a little bit of time here at the top of the hour to let everybody know about the educational resources and the environment that we've built around the tech that is Trade Ideas. The Trading Room, hosted by Mr. Barry Anderson. Barry opens the doors about 30 minutes before every open. Uh, it's a great place to be. Doesn't matter if you're brand new, intermediate, or advanced. There are traders from all of those categories in there on a daily basis. So it's a great place to learn and hear what other experienced traders are doing in the markets on that day. And of course, Barry does a fantastic job at showcasing the way that he uses the tech and shares his trading strategies and plays with you as well. And after the initial flurry, first couple of hours, he's all about answering questions as well uh, for the new people. So if you haven't been taking advantage of the trading room, get in there and do so. It is free and it is a benefit that we provide to you guys. You don't even necessarily have to be a subscriber get in there and experience the trading room. Of course, today's Monday, you get myself and Steve for the 5 p.m. Eastern uh, webinar slots. And Steve's gonna take the steering wheel for tomorrow with the trade of the week. And he's gonna ride shotgun with him. Here comes hump day. Wednesday, we like to change it up a little bit and bring in our CEO and founder, Dan Merkin, along with our chief technical officer, Brad Williams. We'll see if this one goes off this week because I know that Dan is uh, getting a little R&R &R in Hawaii this weekend or this week. Uh, so we'll see, keep uh, keep you posted on that. And he's gonna round out the 5 p.m. Eastern web slots on Thursday with the trading studio and I'm gonna ride shotgun with him. Then we have our ever popular daily support session which is every Monday through Friday uh, at 12 p.m. going into 1 p.m. Eastern. It's a great place to get your questions answered in a live environment by one of us, uh, trader slash trainer guys, um, different guy in there every weekday, and it's live, so anything is fair game there. It could be something very simple, could be about brokerage plus, auto trading, whatever the case may be. Um, in the next slide here, it'll show you how to get there. So just take note of the address at the lower left-hand corner, trade-ideas.com backslash live, pretty simple. Uh, good news is that's a static URL, so once you get to it, just bookmark it, and you can just boom, 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 you're back there each and every time. Uh, once again, the daily support session going from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. In addition to the stuff I just showed you guys, we have a great educational series, uh, the TI University series, really good for getting over the learning curve quicker than later. 201 through 401. Of course, if you're brand new, these are gonna be very important right here, 101 and 201. As we get into 301 and 401, we get into advanced things like back testing and things of that nature. Uh, but if you're brand new and you have not watched these, uh, do yourself a favor and at least knock down 101 and 201. Easiest way to access these videos is just to cruise over to YouTube, do a quick search for trade ideas, you'll find our channel, uh, do a little search for TI University, They'll come right up and you can get rolling there. And, and now we are here with the day's itinerary. Um, so Steve, 
before you do the market breakdown, I mean, I don't know if you saw the same thing. I know we all kind of chat on the trader thread, but, uh, you know, all time highs, things going up. But yeah. what I noticed today is some of the better setups and some of the bigger moves were to the downside today. Like I said, I don't know if that was just me or if you guys were seeing that as like well. That for a while. It's been like that for a little while. Mm -hmm. So the same old, same old continues, you know, and as we've talked about kind Mystery of rally. Uh huh. All time highs certainly does not mean trading became easy. Of course, it's never easy, but some days are easier than others. But uh, yeah, some some interesting things playing out or just some things that we don't typically see. These things keep showing up over and over again. So having said that, I will kick it over to you. All right. Take a well, look at this action today. I do have something that uh, um, caught my eye of interest for the most part, and I do believe I was kind of harking on it. Um, harping hearkening whatever you want to say on it last week and um and that was the nasdaq and the um the back seat stay the back seat um that it, it kind of taken to the the dow and, and the s p and you know technically you know there and there and there i think i pointed you know five days of rejection there in the 50 and i said you know that was really keeping an eye on that we're going to see what happens you know either the nasdaq's going to just stay weak and the others are going to pay attention or maybe the thing will just catch back up and wouldn't you know the strength of this market just doesn't seem to have limits. And then we move back over to the big guy. Uh, like we said, all time highs, but it does feel like thin air up here. It just seems like it's been hard. Like you know, I agree with Jamie, we've been kind of passing around the same sentiment for about a month around here internally with the traders. Why is my stuff not up 4% or 3%? Uh, why is it down? And you know, so it's just, it's just the way it's been. Um, the only other comment I really have was that uh, the Dow continuing to kind of um, move higher on the um, the simplistic stuff. Um, and what was the other one, the IWM, you know, back, you know, looked like it was also under pressure. I think I focused on the NASDAQ and the IWM as both having some rejection looks to them. Well, now that we can go backwards again on our time machine, you know, it's a totally different look back here. So personally, um, I'm not short the market. I haven't been short the market. I was in a lot of cash and always kind of watching the sidelines and waiting for the cues. And the cues are just literally CUE, that is not the NASDAQ, QQQ. But the signs are, are pointing right in my face and saying, you've got to continue to look for long setups. And I, I think I'd rather look for setups out there that are more um, like these types of setups in nature, maybe buying on support in individual names, not just the... Uh, not just this for an index, rather than looking for things that are raking out because as Jamie said, what, it's just not working. You, the charts that look like they wanna break out as an individual stock name, they just don't seem to be following what the NASDAQ and um, what the S&Ps are showing us here. So um, it's it's a stock picker's market to just borrow the tired old um, stereotype uh, axiom. It's a stock picker's market out there. You just gotta be in the right things, but the winds are definitely pointing upward. There's absolutely no reason to try and be uh, short the market. Maybe there's reason to be short certain individual names if they're not gonna really participate. But um, uh, I'm back to looking for setups. Am I looking for the traditional type of setups like this guy right here? That's a perfect little window. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that was really working for me in individual names, but it really has been kind of like failing me and I've been getting out for simple losers. Oh, here's a fun one. Um, last week's trade of the week. This is what you get for following your rules, everybody. Um, <laughs> When I say I'm starting to get a little anxious and tired and when a stock posts a close at the end of the day, I make my decisions on the swing trade, keep, press, change, rearrange, whatever. I decided that I was losing patience. There it is. That was the look that said, I'm done. I'm losing patience with this guy. You know, I would have loved to have seen Box move higher the trade of the week last week on this day or this day, but it didn't. And knowing what I've known in the back of my mind, like we said, these things are just failing, they're not working. Well, the trading gods thought that was pretty funny that I got out and followed my rules only to just, uh, of course, I'm only just lock it up. <laughs> and Steve, you do, just... you do have company because I was, I, I'm guilty of the same thing. I think we all got hit. Andy got out, Chris got out, you got, we all <laughs> laughed. So when you have that many guys that have been doing this for this long, over a century's worth of experience that are just zigging when they should be zagging, hey, Take note, it's not just you, it's the environment, it's the backdrop we're in, and we just gotta try and adapt. So I'll say it again, it's the stock picker's market. Yeah, so in essence, the rising it. tide is not lifting all of the yeah. boats here lately. No, it doesn't seem like it. Um, so I'm trying to figure out which ones are gonna start working, <laughs> not shorting. And if I wanna participate, you know, the, 
the turtle that doesn't stick his neck out doesn't make any progress so you got to participate I'm just trying to figure out at what point in the jump rope here on these individual daily setups am i supposed to be keying in on so that's where i am right now very good steve all set that's all, all i got all right let me grab the screen back from you here and you're going to see that theme remain constant in everything we talk about uh in this webinar so tell you what now I'm going to share uh, at the end of the webinar here. I've got some links prepared to share with you guys. Um, and of course, I always talk about the compare count readings, but I very uh, I haven't been sharing it here lately. So I'll, I'm going to include that link as well because today was a pretty good read um, based on, of course, you know, if we take a peek over here at the market, we had a nice juicy gap up. We had a nice just grind higher all day until we got up here and just kind of flattened out. Um, but what did my compare counts read after the first 15 minutes? And there they were. We had a bearish count. Now, just barely 1% over that magic 55% that I typically like to see. But still, um, when I saw this after 15 minutes, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, keeping in mind everything Steve and I just talked about, I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe it's better not to chase things now maybe it's a better pullback day and sure enough any of the longs that that i did get a hold of um that pullback was a better fill than chasing them uh, for obvious reasons so another way to read this right sometimes it gives us the market direction but you know when we've got a power gap like this you know gapping into all-time highs even further um you know to think that the market's going to peel off and then watching it do this and watching it never peel off, you know, things are definitely getting tricky. Um, so just keep that in mind um, when you watch this window. Sometimes we're going to have that capitulate, you know, that that uh, correlating move. And other times it can just help you figure out, well, do I need to be a little bit more patient and wait for things to pull back here at some key levels like the 10 or the VWAP or whatever your favorite uh, moving average might be. Okay. so. I'll include that uh, at the end of the webinar when I pass the links out. So let's just go ahead and, and dive right into Holly because Holly basically was experiencing the same thing that um, we were describing earlier. Didn't get slaughtered today or anything like that, um, but still, if we focus on the toolbar over here or the channel bar, keep in mind these are all assuming 100 shares per trade. 2.0 didn't see anything today, which is kind of strange, you know, with all the scans that are loaded up, all the back testing and optimization, um, it gets a little bit more difficult for the AI to seek out that statistical alpha as well. Holly Grail spitting out four signals and doing 100 shares a pop, only up 30 bucks. Neo kicking out three signals, assuming 100 shares, 77.45. Um, but if we check out, and once again, before I continue, just want to tell everybody that everything on my blotter here is not doing 100 shares. It's just risking $100 per trade and then letting the AI size this accordingly uh, for the individual stop loss for each one. And that tells us how many shares we can be in. Um, but if we cycle through the risk modes down here, conservative down 63 bucks, moderate down 112. And of course, no big surprise if we were just letting everything go to the close down 382 bucks. So while we've got a smidge of profitability doing 100 shares, when we look through here, it was still a down day, depending on what risk mode you were operating in, okay? Um, having said that, there's still a few nuggets to, uh, to glean from the Holly trades here. So let's take a look, let's see. We're gonna do this kind of in reverse order today. Of course, the three things that we typically like to look at are conservative and moderate spread, any good add-on opportunities, or any good trade arounds here. Well, when we take a look at conservative and moderate, only one thing stands out here. I said we were going to go backwards, but let's not. Let's just let's just go ahead and knock out this one conservative versus moderate spread here, and we can see. Give me your pointer. Holly takes a small loser in the ACY short. But if she would have stuck in there, 
not exited on a profit save, which was really not a profit save by the time she got out, losing a smidge. Um, it was the biggest winner on the day. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It was a short trade. All right, keeping in that theme that we were discussing earlier, biggest winner of the day on the Holly Blotter, a short trade. So let's take a peek here at that specific trade. And not a bad trade whatsoever. All right, let's, uh, let's see. I think I was going to look at this one in the five minutes because it did have a little bit of an opportunity for an add-on, not really the textbook play like I typically like to see. Um, but Nonetheless, here, entry right about here at 14 at 99, as we can see from the blue box over here. Get a little immediate gratification, um, but quickly si uh, cycles back up, gets about halfway through uh, to the stop area before it gets tired of going back up. And then it finally capitulates here. And as we eke on down, short from 1499, we get down to this 1411 area. Now, this little Area over here kind of made it nasty, but I'm just thinking to myself, okay, not so bad. Could have been a nice little ad right here as it breaks these uh, these candle lows right here and gets into this little choppy wick area. Um, so we could call that a nice little opportunity right there as we break these levels right here. Of course, I can't draw today, um, but I think everybody can see what I'm talking about. Could have got a little bit more downside push um, shorting this level, of course, just like at the beginning of the trade, we get a little downside action right back up there, bumps its head on it again before uh, taking that last little leg down for the day. Um, so once again, you know, biggest trade of the day, biggest winner of the day in the Holly universe, a short play. Holly exiting a little bit prematurely. All we had to do was ignore that profit save exit, stay in it, and then potential add on right there at the right about the 1423 level. Okay, and as we can see here, when we're looking at the rest of these, there is no spread, okay? I would be remiss if I didn't show ale here because even though the target got hit, I mean, what a beautiful exit, okay? Just a stellar trade in conservative mode, long at 7066, boom, 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 just up, up and away, hits that price target, look what it does. If you didn't take that money all the way back down to the close, okay? So even the biggest long winner gave it all back. You know, once again, keeping with that theme, it's, it's just hard for anything to keep the wind in its sails today, um, but still a beautiful trade nonetheless. Ale uh, hitting that uh, price target and then giving it all back before the day was done. So that leaves one more thing to talk about. Notice over here, the ones that got stopped out, and keep in mind my risk was 100. These guys just kept on stinking it up the whole rest of the day, Mara and APV. But ACAD noted the value or just the sun. But if we go back and look at this thing and how it reacted around the stop area, I think it's going to tell the here to tell you what I'll get. It's going to tell the tail pretty well here. Not to what, let's go ahead and shrink this back up to 15. Make it a little, a little easier to see here. Okay, so stop area up here at 2192 where the red line indicates. Um, AI calls the short right here, pretty close to the open, about a little over five minutes in. And look what happens right up to the stop area just barely wicks through and then boom, below it and lower for the rest of the day, okay? So I like to, see, when I see these, these are really good trade arounds. They just spend a little blip or a little wick above that stop area and then, you know, boom, all the way back down, covers that whole area just in the 15 minute candle. Um, but, you know, even if you covered here or if you stayed in it all day, uh, the results are pretty much the same. It's just the timing was slightly off on this one. So anytime you see that stop area get hit, when you see them keep going, eh, disregard, probably not a trade around candidate, but when they spend just a little bit of time and wick right through there, and then they never see it again, well, then that can be a good trade around. Uh, Re-enter that trade, whether you're in it the first time or maybe you weren't, you just saw the AI get stopped out of it, and uh, you can react from that. So it's either a second mouse gets the cheese trade if you were in it the first time, or it could have been a nice entry for you seeing the AI get stopped out, or 
taking advantage of another trader's pain is the way Steve and Andy and I used to do it when we had to go to an office. It's the same same song, same dance, except instead of a person, it's the AI uh, getting stopped out. So kind of a non-event for Holly today, down a smidge in the risk modes, up a smidge if you're doing 100 shares, uh, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. All right, Steve, just checking out the questions panel. Looks like you're knocking them out. Let me know if I need to. Uh, let me know if I need to rehash anything. I'd be happy to do so. Okay, so ad ops in the ACY. I did forget to talk about the DISI though. ACY right here. We covered that. Uh, DSSI. Once again, not the prettiest, but I feel compelled to cover it here. Okay, so DSSI, not a bad, uh, not a not a bad trade. Didn't knock it out of the park, but hey, almost a one R on a hundred dollar risk, and that was holding it into the close. So we got the original signal right here with Holly, right there at 1041, and then we get a leg up. We get this nice little area of consolidation. We get the wick right there through the 10 period. And then what, what's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 35, 40 minutes of consolidation before we breach that little level right there. So this would have been a decent add on right here. Not a whole lot, but getting up from 1058, tacking on maybe another 30 cents or so, maybe a quarter or so. Um, once again, slim pickings on the add on, but hey, a quarter's a quarter, and it's not that high priced of a stock there. So little bit of an add-on opportunity there in Dizzy with this little consolidation period right after the signal. And I do believe that is it for the Holly recap now. So let's move on to the next topic. Um, those of you who attend on the regulars know that two of my favorite windows are these two guys right here, Turbo Up Family No Resistance, and the turbo family down, no support. Uh, problem is, in the market of late, a couple of past, well, you could just say for the whole year, from last March to middle of uh, last month, this guy's been pretty uh, quiet for obvious reasons, right? There's not a lot of stocks breaking down, hitting all-time lows, and then heading lower. But it seems to have come to life in the past couple of weeks, so it merits paying attention to. You know, no harm in watching it. When you see an A, uh, an A play, a plus setup, well, why not take advantage of it? And it spit out a pretty good example today. And the stock that it did it on was this one right here, Oust. <laughs> Oust got ousted, you could say today. Thing is, it was a pretty young stock, so let's take a peek at it. All right. Notice what we have here, okay? Pretty young stock, uh, it's kind of flopping around down here, but today, boom, it broke that level, all right? And so, when we see this happening right here, yeah, I tell you what, we gotta go back to 15s on this. And I've been having to look at five minute charts a lot more here lately, just to see some, some type of pattern. Um, but, you know, what do we have? We had a gap up to the top of the bar, right here, and I do believe the open was right there at 899 and the high, yeah, that was the high. So opened at the top of that bar, looking like it might try to steady itself up, but not having any of it. 15 minutes, boom, they sell it off, and then we get a nice little 45 minute to an hour of consolidation <clears throat> before we get to this level right here. Ping, ping, ping. Refresh everybody's memory, okay. We got a nice clean setup on the intraday 15 minute period check out what it's doing with the 10 period right here, which is the green line, tapping it down each time. So once we get this break right here, uh, right around the 852 level, if we put that short on, use the prior 15 minute candle as the high in case we're wrong. You know, you weren't risking a whole lot here. High of that candle is 865, signal comes at 852. You know, sometimes you can find these. Uh, I remember the AI the other day had a stop loss of four cents and amazingly it stayed in it. <laughs> Uh, but this is just another example. We're using the previous 15-minute candle. Um, would have kept us in with a relatively small stop, okay? So uh, if it holds up, we got a very small risk area up here. And by the time the day was over, 
we ended up with a nice, fat, juicy reward area here. Uh, closing today, let's see, right there at 762. So a really good percentage win. Um, not looking too good. I don't think this one's doing anything in the post market. Let's take a peek here. All right, just kind of grinding sideways. So uh, just keep in mind, what is the allure of these patterns here, okay? When there is no support or what we could call shorting into the hole, we look to the left, there's just nothing that could catch this thing, okay? It's in free fall mode right now. Um, so this one will be on my radar again tomorrow. Maybe maybe there's more selling. Maybe it sets up nice and clean again, uh, but we'll see. But, you know, this window spit out a really nice trade today. If you kind of go through some of the other ones, you'll see some some decent kind of patterns, but nothing quite as pretty as OUST today. So that one's coming back to life. This will be one of the windows that I share uh, towards the end of the session here. So this little guy's coming back to life, which, you know, maybe it's short-lived or maybe the frequency of quality plays starts to increase. And if that is the case, well, then that's telling us something. It's telling us something about a few layers down of the market, you know, not just, you know, uh, all these other stocks hitting all-time highs uh, when the rising tide is not lifting all boats. Now, of course, there are long trades that continue to work. Let's take a look at one that came through turbo up, no resistance last Friday. I think everybody will recognize the symbol here, PLBY. Yes, it is Playboy. Um, but just kind of getting back to what Steve and I were talking about, look at this one. You know, here was the breakout on Friday. This one never looked back, boom. You know, up at 20, almost 28 bucks today when the breakout occurred uh, right there at 21, 20 or so. So no rhyme or reason, you know, uh, publishing, entertainment, um, but this one continued and had another nice day today. So some of these guys are holding up, some of them are not. Wish I had the magic formula to go, hmm, this one looks like all the others, but it's not doing the same thing. It's just the way the market is right now. So this one is spitting out some good ones as well. We're going to see a lot more coming through here, obviously. But check out a stock that I saw come through today, which made me scratch my head a little bit more because it's Whirlpool. Whirlpool, okay? That's a pretty boring stock. They make household appliances, washers, dryers, things of that nature, okay? And typically, in the past, when these types of stocks, when these boring kind of defensive staple stocks start to hit all-time highs, that's typically a sign that the market is getting tired, right? So we're starting to see all these little things. I don't think it's enough to, you know, I don't, I don't think the turn is coming anytime soon, but all these little clues, all these little breadcrumbs are starting to be discovered, okay? No follow-through, boring stocks, you know, the hot topic over the past two, three weeks was rotation, rotation. You know, the Q's still lagging, making a valiant effort, right? But still, still behind, right? Um, of course, Facebook, I would be remiss. Hey, they got hacked, 500 million uh, user names and phone numbers uh, hit the black market. But hey, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's good for Facebook. You know, nothing to worry about there as far as tech stocks go, um, but Whirlpool, okay? So before we move on to the next topic here, do you want to take the Sorry, opportunity I to- I didn't inject on the Facebook thing. Isn't that how they make their money anyway? So what's the big deal? <laughs> yeah, hey, if the product is free, you are the product. That is true. But anyway, getting back to Whirlpool, all right? Washing machines hitting all time highs, yeah, okay, all right kind of jives with what we've been talking about with the hit and miss. So as you start to see more of these boring stocks hit highs and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, what else is in the sector? Do not forget about our single stock window. And it's real easy to get that information. All right, you just click on similar. You're gonna get a lot of similar uh, companies and stocks to look at. Now you can sort by any of these columns what I did is I just sorted by earnings per share, and it seems to it seems to today I can't say that this is going to work every day, uh, but the ones that continued uh, were showing up uh, at the top here when I just sorted by earnings per share. 
like I said, that might be the thing moving forward. It might not be, but the bottom line is this is a real quick and easy way to get similar stocks in the similar sector when you start to see these boring uh, stocks come about, okay? Um, in addition to that, uh, the casino stocks. Let's have to scroll back a little bit here. But we did have, this thing was busy today, I'll tell you that. Okay, you're gonna make me scroll all the way back. Well, I'm not gonna bother going into the history, but MGM, okay, one of the stocks that took off, gapped up, took off strong, but guess what, pulled back. You know, going back to what I was talking about earlier with those compare counts, big gap up, heavily, well, not heavily, but a bias to the downside. And what do we have from these stocks that were gapping up, running up a little bit and pulling back? But MGM, nonetheless, hitting all-time highs. Let's see if it held it, but pulled right back, closed below that high of 42.04, okay? So once again, showed promise early on, pulled back, but MGM, casino, right? Usually, going counter to the market, okay? Just like the defensive stocks like Whirlpool and things of that nature. So we might see these things pop up again tomorrow. We might see more casinos doing the same thing, um, but the writing is starting to appear on the wall, but who knows how much writing we have to have on the wall before things actually change. Okay, so turbo up down. We're gonna distribute those. Okay, we've got a I tell you what, before I do that, I'll just drop these at the end because the, the uh link to what we're gonna talk about next is going to be in there as well. So you have all the windows, cloud links, and the link on how to get to the new thing. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a new thing. And I'm about to show it to you. Okay. So the new thing is called the TI Strength, okay? TI Strength Picks is what we could call it. Um, there's gonna be five new picks every Monday, and this is being put together by our newly crowned in-house CMT, Mr. Michael Noss, okay? So, you know, everybody's aware of the trade of the week, which Steve does, and it's in your inbox every Monday morning. Well, if you sign up for this now, you're going to have an additional five things based on the TI Strength Index, which has been clobbering uh, the S&P over the past couple of years. So I'm going to show everybody how to get to that. Uh, but before we do, uh, just a little bit about the way it works, okay? So I'll make sure everybody has this address and how to get to it and how to sign up for it, okay? Um, but a few little factors about uh, the... TI Strength Index, okay, and how to play these things. What we're going to do is we're going to deliver to you the five picks, but we're not going to specify stop losses or profit targets or any of that stuff. That's all going to be contingent upon you guys and your account size and your risk tolerance and all that good stuff. Um, you know, maybe you use your favorite moving averages. Some people it's the 10 on the daily, some people it's the 50 or the 20. Uh, or maybe it's an exponential moving average or, you know, whatever floats your boat, okay? Um, but I did a little experiment because today was the first Monday uh, where the picks were delivered to us. So I thought to myself, hey, why not? Let's just throw a thousand bucks into each pick, see what happens, you know? So these things are geared to get into the Monday of the delivery of the symbols, and they're designed to hold until the following Monday, okay? Um, so the stocks that showed up today, here we can see my Brokerage Plus account, which is attached to my E-Trade account, which by the way, getting very, very close to releasing the E-Trade version of Brokerage Plus. Now, the developers would kill me if I said it's gonna be out at the end of the week or at the end of out, or out at the end of two weeks, but it wouldn't surprise me at all unless we find some more major bugs that there's probably a pretty good shot that it might be out in the next two weeks. That's just my humble opinion. Um, so let's all keep our fingers crossed because big difference between E-Trade and Interactive Brokers is commission free, right? Um, and, you know, you got to think that eventually Interactive might come around, but they haven't yet. Um, or we could all turn into skeletons waiting for that to happen. 
Um, but the good news is E-Trade is commission free. So what I did what I did today based on what I gleaned from the compare count and maybe I should wait for some pullbacks today is I didn't start jumping jumping into these things until about two hours after the open. OK, and this is how things sit at the close in these five positions, just allocating a thousand bucks into each position. Um, so, of course, looking like a traditional blotter when you make multiple entries, A and G O. So let's take a look at all these plays just for giggles here. And we'll kind of take a look at the uh, industry that each and every one is, because remember, these are based around the strength index uh, from technical perspectives. So first on the list, which just happened to be the, the biggest performer today, I got lucky here. And this is all this is waiting two hours. You know, it's not like I was sitting here timing this. Just got a little lucky here. Happened to get A and G O towards the bottom of its range, and it had a nice strong close. But when we go to detail, surgical and medical instrument manufacturing. Okay, take a look over here at the daily. Looking nice and tight up at the top there. Of course, I'd have to squish it back, but uh, you know, all-time high is not too far away. But that's not really what this is predicated on. All right, what's next? OHI, Omega Healthcare. Okay, so from a different sector. Um, nice volume today, not doing a whole lot, up a smidge going into the close, but hey, a lot could change between all of these positions before next Monday rolls around. And you know, having said that, of course, we as traders have our own different mentalities and I guess uh, things that propel us to do things in certain capacities, like Steve and I getting out of the box only to have it laugh at us and continue higher. Um, so just keep in mind, getting in Monday, getting out the following Monday, that's a guideline. You know, Maybe we have a huge up move on Friday and you choose to get out Friday. Um, once again, just like the stops and the profit targets and how much you're willing to risk on everything, that's gonna be subjective, okay? And it's gonna be up to you and your comfort levels. All right, so we got one from the surgical, uh, surgical, okay, Omega Healthcare, investment pools and funds, looking solid. Take a look at the at the daily as well. ENTG, all right, different semiconductor and related device manufacturing. Notice since I'm only chunking a thousand in there and I've got my little script set up. So where I just basically right click over here and everybody can do this with Brokerage Plus. You just select trade, then do you wanna do 2000, $1,000 worth, execute from a different strategy, makes it nice and simple. Then HTGC, I think I did make a mistake on this one and I, I mean twice as much of this one as the others uh, from a keystroke error, but eh, nothing too huge to worry about there. Hercules Capital from the financial vehicle sector, which just happens to be uh, one of the biggest VC-based capital back companies out there. So Hercules, not a significantly crazy day, but looking very strong on the daily up here as well. And lastly, MPC, petroleum stock, okay? So let's look at this again. I got lucky on the ANGO here. Now, I will say this, I will admit, when MPC came across, look what it was doing. I was thinking to myself, man, this thing's about to break an orb. Maybe I should wait, but I didn't. I just wanted to get in all five, but I couldn't bring myself to short it, right? Um, even though in retrospect, that would have been a nice little scalp there. Um, so for a lot of the day, I was underwater on MPC, but before the day was out, we recouped and down a smidge here. Um, but just keep in mind as you move forward with these things, I mean, it's all about timing, you know, in retrospect, if I had a time machine, I could be like, yeah, well, I could have easily shorted it and then, and then reverse the position here. Because remember, we do have something that makes that very easy. We've got a reverse button. Okay. Um, so once again, just a, a nice example of the subjective nature of trading. Oil got beat down a little bit, but uh, during that time period, what did I do? I simply looked at the daily and went, yeah, we're probably gonna probably gonna cycle down. I thought maybe we'd stop it at Friday's low, but it decided it had a little bit more in it. But at the worst case scenario, I was like, well, 
does get down to these levels and puts in a strong close, maybe I'll uh, up the position a little bit tomorrow. We'll just have to see how it goes. Um, so anyway, just kind of wanted to give you guys the lowdown on the new thing that is going to be the, uh, the strength alerts and the new picks that are going to start being delivered to you guys and just kind of some thoughts on how I handled them today. And as time progresses, uh, be able to put more and more layers upon this and we will see what happens. Uh, so all in all, not a bad start. Up is up. You can see the equity curve here. It took a little bit of time. And of course, this is just keeping in, in tradition with the manic nature of the market. And a little drawdown. Hey, now we're nice and up again. Oh, now we're negative again. And you know, the ebb and the flow sit in the red so that we can get to the green. So without further ado, I tried to do this the smart way instead of posting all the links individually. I'm going to try to post them all at once here and hopefully that works. We'll see here. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to extend my chat panel out here because I can't see what it's trying to put in there. All right. Cooperate with me here, please. Okay. Well, okay. I think that worked. Turbo down, turbo up, the compare count window, and the strength alerts. Great success. I think they all transferred over successfully. Oh, and I'm glad, Vladimir, that you mentioned that because I forgot to do so. So the strength alerts, they are a new product, okay? But here's the rub, okay? Let's say you're not a TI subscriber and you don't want to subscribe to TI Pro you're going to be able to subscribe to this independently. And Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the price is going to be, if you just want this, it's going to be 17 bucks. Okay. Yes. But if you're already a subscriber uh, in the coming, I'd say two or three days, we will add a strength index channel over here so that current users can still see all of the plays. And we'll dedicate a channel to that as well. So, once again, if you're not a subscriber and you just want the strength plays, 17 bucks. If you're already a subscriber, we're going to be adding a channel for you guys uh, moving forward. So that should keep everybody nice and happy. All right, Steve, any questions that I need to backtrack on here? Are we all caught up? I think we're good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the clock is telling me that we're about 12 minutes from the top of the hour. So unless anybody has any questions, it's time for Scott to give us the old cane. Well, Mark, to your question there, there's a full newsletter that will come out if you are paying the 17 bucks, you'll get the picks and the newsletter that Michael Noss puts together. Um, if you're an existing subscriber, and you don't want to pay up the additional 17 bucks, then you're just going to get the channel along with the symbols that were produced for that Monday. I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to work. Steve, do we know if that's going to be available in the basic package? I or have, have we talked about that? Yeah, a few details, a few details to be ironed out. I'm uh, just kind of wanting to give you guys a sneak peek. Um, but as far as whether you have to be premium or standard, that one's still unknown to both of us guys right now. Um, Jennifer, as far as what might be discussed in the newsletter that Michael puts out, I don't know because today was kind of the first push out of the signals. All right. Um, as far as the, well, I might be able to give you a little bit here because based on what we got today, um, it's gonna show the chart. Oh, actually this is not it. This is just the uh, the sign up page with that little bit.ly link that I included in there. Um, but there's a little breakdown of each play. Uh, it just goes into more detail about each and every play. Um, so once again, that'll be available if you pay the 17 bucks. If not, you'll just get the signals in the new channel. Can't really go into detail about that right just yet. All right, Scott, I do believe we're ready for you to let everybody know how they can save a little bit of dough on a new sub or an upgrade. If you're yeah. ready, sir. A couple items. Uh, go ahead and grab our uh, 
Director of Software Development's Favorite Strategy Indicators uh, by going to tradeideas.com slash strategy. Get that new ebook and check it out. It's probably got some cloud links that you can import directly into your uh, trading uh, trade ideas windows. There's also a podcast, uh, Trade Ideas Podcast is a search term to look for. And uh, check out the most recent ones. And uh, when you subscribe, hit that subscribe button. You'll be ready to pick up the next one. There's a code. Opportunity is good to save 15% off your first month or year of your next Trade Ideas installment uh, or new subscription. So just uh, go ahead and grab that code. Start up today or do the upgrade. And uh, follow Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot. You can find Steve at TI Steve G. Also find us at on Facebook at Trade Ideas Pro. And uh, any questions, shoot them to Trade Ideas at uh, to, to info at tradeideas.com and that'll uh, get you the help you need because that goes into our help desk software. Thanks, Jamie and Steve. Have a good one. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thank you, Steve. Everybody have a great rest tomorrow. of the day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.